Climate change is a frustrating topic. Politicians are not committed to doing anything meaningful about it, and most people like you and me feel powerless and don't really know what to do to help. Climate change is happening, and it is likely accelerating. This is not jumbo mumbo. We seem to be living in a world where every summer is warmer than the last. As a millennial, sometimes I do wonder if I should bring kids to this world and let them suffer from the climate apocalypse in the next decade. But there is an important point missing in the narrative on mainstream media, I've collected some of the most important data points about climate change and I'll share with you in this video the status quo through the lens of a data nerd and we'll also debunk some of the misconceptions about climate change, why there is hope and how AI, among other technologies, can help us tackle climate change or make it worse. This video is created in collaboration with JetBrains Data Lore, a collaborative data science platform for teams. This platform streamlines inside delivery and makes data and business teams more productive together. This video's content and the data story are also available on JetBrains Data Law blog if you're a data nerd like I am, so feel free to check it out in the description below. Last year, 2023, was the warmest year on record since 1850, making it an unusual year. In fact, this is the first time that the annual average temperature has exceeded the pre-industrial baseline period by more than 1.5 degrees Celsius, as some data sets suggest. If you're not familiar with this jargon, the pre-industrial period is reference period from 1880 to 1900. You might argue this might just be an anomaly, and this is caused by El Nino during this year. But from what we can see in this graph, it looks like a very solid upward trend in average temperature in the last four decades. Under the Paris Agreement, many countries have set an aspirational goal of limiting long-term global warming to no more than 1.5 degrees Celsius. That target is based on the state of the climate averaged over many years. So so a single year exceeding 1.5 degrees is not automatically considered as breaching this target. However, this is a stark warning sign of how close the overall climate system has come to exceeding this Paris Agreement goal. As humans continue to pump more and more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, it is likely that climate warming will regularly exceed the 1.5 degrees in the next decade. As you can see on this graph, the CO2 level in the atmosphere in the past million years has never been above this line. And this is how it looks in the past 70 years. I surely wouldn't want to sit on it. The rise in CO2 emissions in the past century mostly come from fossil fuels and industry, or in other words, human activities. According to a report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the nationally determined contributions committed by 2030 show the temperature will increase by 1.5 degrees Celsius in the first half of 2030s, and then will make it very difficult to control temperature increase by 2 degrees towards the end of 21st century. But why do scientists have to make a fuss about 1.5 or 2 degree changes in the global temperature? We just need to turn on the air conditioner, right? Well, it is more serious than that. With increased temperature, basically hot places will get hotter, rainy places will get rainier, and the risks and strength of extreme weather events increase significantly. At 1.5 degrees Celsius warming, about 14% of the Earth's population will be exposed to severe heat waves at least once every five years, while at 2 degrees warming, that number jumps to 37%. Warming beyond 2 degrees makes all of these extremes more extreme, including frequent hurricanes, droughts, and wildfires. More ecosystems will be put under major pressure, some will not survive. For humans, that also means we may not be able to produce enough food to eat, and large amounts of people will have to migrate, and this could destabilize the nation state. Extreme weather set aside, there's an equally big problem melting ice at the poles. This can be captured by satellite data and ground observations. Since the beginning of the 21st century, the ice sheets in the Antarctic and Greenland have both started to decrease in mass. Together, the Antarctic and Greenland ice sheets contain more than 99% of freshwater ice on Earth. If they both completely melted, they would raise sea level by an estimated 67 meters. So is this going to be our future? How about the artificial intelligence that can hopefully save us from ourselves? So now let's talk about how AI may help us fight climate change. 
or not, 2023 and 2024 so far have been a crazy time with respect to progress in artificial intelligence, with the highlight of GPT-4, Gemini, and many open source language models becoming available to the public. Although AI still cannot draft new climate policies and enforce them yet, or rather, politicians won't let it. You might be asking, what can AI actually do to help us tackle many climate challenges? In my research, AI at the most basic level can help us understand better what's going on and help us stop denying the problems. The main uses of AI I've seen fall into these categories, monitoring, predicting, and optimizing. Climate Trace is an initiative that uses AI and machine learning to calculate greenhouse gas emissions on a global scale with the goal of moving toward real-time precision. It offers a powerful, free, and independent overview of the greenhouse gas emissions by location and by source. Looking at the southern area of Vietnam, my home country, I'm not surprised to see the huge amount of emissions here coming from oil and gas fields. You can go ahead and download the data from this website for your own research. In addition, researchers have been using neural network models to quickly and accurately map and monitor the extent of Antarctic icebergs in satellite images. This is important for quantifying how much meltwater they release into the ocean. This task is often challenging because from a satellite image, icebergs, sea ice, and clouds all appear white, making it hard to pick out the actual icebergs. With the neural network model, this task is handled much more accurately and more efficiently. Similarly, machine learning models have also helped map the forest coverage and the impact of deforestation. AI is also making waste management more efficient. Waste is a big producer of methane and is responsible for a substantial amount of CO2 emissions. Using a machine learning system for object detection, a startup tracked 32 billion waste items across 67 waste categories in 2022 and says it identifies 86 tons of material on average that could be recovered but is being sent to landfill. Large supermarkets around the world are also using AI to predict demands and thereby reducing waste. In the Netherlands, an environmental organization called The Ocean Cleanup is using AI and other technologies to help clear plastic pollution from the ocean. The neural network algorithm that detects objects is helping the organization create detailed detailed maps of ocean litter in remote locations, the ocean waste can then be collected and removed, which is more efficient than previous cleanup methods using trawlers and aeroplanes. AI models have also helped us more accurately predict temperature and climate disaster. The AI model called GraphCast can not only deliver 10-day weather predictions, but can also offer early warning signs of extreme weather events. So this has the potential to save lives. So far, I feel like AI has most been used as a machine learning tool, and I haven't seen AI being used to create new solutions and new technologies itself. In the future, if we have an artificial general intelligence or artificial super intelligence, this kind of AI could potentially do so much more. However, some skeptics think we shouldn't be too romantic about AI saving the planet. They believe claims that artificial intelligence will help solve the climate crisis are misguided. Models like GPT-4 and Gemini require a huge amount of energy to train and to run. This graph shows the estimated carbon footprint of training some popular large language models. Training GPT-4 resulted in about 7,000 metric tons of carbon dioxide. This is the equivalent of driving a gasoline car for nearly 18 million miles powering more than 1,300 homes for one year. This is just the tip of the iceberg. The carbon footprint of an AI model is roughly equal to the energy needed to train the model, plus the number of queries times the energy required to run each query, and all of this is then multiplied by the energy efficiency of the hardware. There's evidence that most companies spend much more energy on serving an AI model or performing inference than on training it. In fact, about 90% of the energy is spent on serving. The electricity demands of AI means a doubling of data centers to help keep pace with the industry. In the US, AI needs so much power that old coal plants are sticking around. That's quite alarming. 
companies like OpenAI and Google don't typically publish the environmental impact figures of their models. They are only speculations and estimations so far. I tend to think reporting the environmental impact should be regulated for these large language models. To see if there's any visible upward trends in fossil fuels in the more recent years, we turn to the energy consumption over the last 10 years. Coal consumption has actually plummeted in rich countries like the US or the UK. It has also leveled off in upper middle income countries like China. These these countries are also the largest consumers of coal. The same trend can be seen for oil and gas consumptions. Given that fossil fuels, coal, oil and gas account for over 75% of global greenhouse gas emissions, it seems that this trend is promising. Also, technologies are making it cheaper and more attractive to produce renewable energy, such as wind and solar power. Electric cars have also become a norm in many countries in Europe as more people prefer environment-friendly travel. It is not to say that all is well and the developing of AI models hasn't caused any harm to the environment. This can likely only be observed more clearly in the next few years. So AI seems to be a double-edged sword if we're not careful. Right now, there is not enough concrete evidence to say the costs actually outweigh the benefits. On the other hand, data has made it so crystal clear where climate change is heading if we don't do anything. But we've also seen that there's no shortage of solutions and human ingenuity. This makes me feel so positive because if we want to make a change to the world, we first need to believe that change is possible and no problem is too big to solve. And hopefully in a few years time, AI will help us make bigger steps towards better climate future. If you're interested in reading the content of this video and check out the data report in a data law notebook, these fancy visualizations are created with the help of AI assistant on data law. You can find the blog post on JetBrain's data law website. Link in the description below. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.